Time is obviously a limited resource and the more you can make the most of it, the more successful you're destined to be. If you're setting yourself up for something unachievable, you are setting yourself up for failure before you even get started. Welcome back to On The Horizon. This is Melrose Michaels. I am your host, and I'm here to share what's worked for me in building my adult creator business to try to make building yours just a little bit easier. Let's get into today's episode. Who misses free and affordable ads without the anti-sex work rhetoric? Assembly 4 is a team of sex workers and technologists from Melbourne, Australia, aiming to bring back free and fair advertising to the sex work community. They also give back to organizations based in harm reduction, sex work, and education. Stepping away from the clunky design of traditional platforms, their platform, Trist.link, is a refreshing and well-needed change in both presentation and mission. It's free to join and open to all. In the words of an A4 user, from the policies to the language to the advice and tips, it makes such a big difference to feel supported and encouraged instead of policed. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Today's space is all around time management. I kind of feel that this is a topic that doesn't get enough attention in the way that I, that is very specific and very actionable. So I really wanted to dial in kind of the things I've done in the past to really hone in my time management, what I've personally done, and just share it with you in case anything will help you guys who are listening in. So as adult creators, managing your time effectively is obviously crucial for achieving all of your goals creating quality content, as well as growing your audience. Time is obviously a limited resource, and the more you can make the most of it, the more successful you're destined to be. So today I want to talk about ways to manage your time more effectively so that you can feel more confident in your everyday workload, as well as more organized and less overwhelmed. If you're enjoying this podcast episode so far, please take one moment to share it with another one of your adult content creator friends because you know what the rule is here. We do not gatekeep and we want to make as many adult creators businesses as easy as possible. And you sharing this episode with them might do exactly that. Thanks so much in advance. So before I dive too deep into how we can manage our time as adult creators effectively, I do want to discuss a concept that's called time confetti. So time confetti is a term used to describe scattered fragmented moments that often occur throughout our days. So It's often a result of just modern life's many distractions and interruptions. So unlike larger blocks of time, time confetti is interrupted time made up of small, often unpredictable chunks that we have difficult, you know, management over. And those are the places we lose the most productivity. So this term time confetti was coined by Bridget Schultz in her book, Overwhelmed Work, Love, Play When No One Has the Time. It's a really great book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Um, And Scholl argues that time confetti has become increasingly prevalent in modern life, as people are obviously bombarded with email, notifications, and all of these distractions that interrupt their focus and their ability to concentrate. So some examples of time confetti are checking emails or social media during, you know, short breaks throughout the day, answering a phone call or responding to a text message while working on a project, trying to multitask by working on multiple projects at once or at the same time, A lot of people don't realize multitasking, typically, if you actually track your efforts during a multitasking period, you typically lose productivity instead of gaining it. Um, And then dealing with unexpected interruptions, such as like a coworker stopping by your desk to chat, obviously not as applicable to adult creators, but it demonstrates the concept of what can cause time confetti. So the problem with time confetti is that it can make it really difficult to focus on important tasks that lead to a sense of overwhelm and stress. So it can make it harder for us to find time for activities that are important for our well-being, our business, exercise, socializing, self-care, all of these things. So the first step in knowing where you're creating time confetti in your day is to obviously track it and have it tracked effectively. So when I first committed to finding ways to optimize my time personally, I downloaded a time tracking application called Webwork Tracker. The website for it, if you are interested, they do have a free trial. I don't I don't use this currently, but I use the free trial to just monitor where I was losing my time. So the website, if you did want to try that free trial, is www.webwork-tracker.com. So they have a 14 free day trial, and then 
It's basically a Google extension that you can install and it allows you to kind of clock in and label the task you're spending time on and then pause the timer and start a new task or take a break. So this will start to give you a really accurate idea of how long things are generally taking you per task that you're working on, as well as just draw awareness to when you're getting distracted. So once you've tracked your time for, say, like 10 days consistently, then you can go and cancel a free trial if you want. Then you're going to get a pretty good picture of how long each of these tasks are taking you. And that's going to be the first step in optimizing and defining your workload times. So once you've kind of got a grasp of how much time each thing that you are assigning to yourself is taking you, and I mean that with like a data sense, you've tracked it, you know how long these things take you. The second thing is to notice where you fall off task. This is something that's going to happen that at first you're probably not going to be super aware of. But when you're tracking your time, because you have your awareness placed on the time you're spending per task, you may start to notice where you fall off task or where where and when you get distracted. So is it when your phone goes off? Is it when someone in your household knocks on your door and interrupts you? Identifying those kind of things in your workday are the things that create the time confetti for you. So knowing that is going to help you understand how to prevent creating time confetti going forward. Now let's talk about just practical ideas on how to manage your time and then more effectively manage the time that you have. So aside from this idea of time confetti, tracking your time, really understanding how long things take you, you can also optimize your time once you've got a clear vision of that. So the first part of this is always going to be setting clear goals and priorities. I like to give you guys really actionable stuff that you can, you know, listen into the Twitter space or read our blog and then go and put this into practice. So all of the steps from here on out are going to be really practical, really you know, tangible things that you can actually go and do. So before you start creating content, which is going to be the main task or goal, I'm going to be referencing that like throughout this entire example, just because it's something we obviously all do, something we can all relate to. But this whole set of time management can be applied to any task or any goal. So before starting to create content, it's really important to have a clear understanding of what you want to achieve and what tasks are most important. With limited time in a day, it's crucial not only to have to-do lists, but to be prioritized and targeted on the tasks on that to-do list. So you want to approach your tasks with like a sniper-like focus rather than a shotgun-like spread. So I'm sorry for the gun analogy, but this is an idea that is trying to encourage you to think extremely intentionally about using your energy for the most important tasks that actually move your business forward in the biggest ways. If you think about this, this is how a lever works, right? You use a lever to get a lot of movement or a lot of action out of a small movement or small piece of effort. So this is the same kind of thing. If you're using sniper-like focus, the thing that you're hitting or the task that you're doing may be small, but those like high priority things are going to be what brings your business way further than being distracted or being all over the place and not narrowing your focus. Once you have thought that through, you're going to break down your goals into smaller achievable tasks and then prioritize them based on their impact to your overall success. So the first part of that is to determine what objectives are important to your content. So is the objective of this content to increase engagement? Is it to grow your audience? Is it to generate new subscribers? Having an objective within the content you create is really important. And your objective may be just to update your your fan site or just to update your clip store. That alone can be enough objective. But if you're creating something like a video that you want to get new subscribers, think about it and approach it as if you're creating a commercial. You know, maybe you are going to do a compilation video of five of your best videos or your best pieces of your best videos, throw it into one trailer. That, if you're approaching it intentionally, you know that that content is being created just to promote yourself on social or just to get new new subscribers. So making sure you have an objective in mind for whatever you're creating is really, really important. So creating SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T, SMART goals for these objectives and prioritizing them based on your desired outcome is going to help with that. A SMART goal, this is an acronym often used in business, is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. That is what a SMART goal is. So to be specific means a goal should be clear and well-defined It should answer questions like what you want to accomplish, why it is important, who is involved, and where it will take place. Most creators do not take the time, in my opinion or in my experience, to actually examine their goals with this much detail or examining their task on their to-do list with this much detail. So if your goal is, again, to create content, 
you should be able to outline that goal specifically by defining what kind of content you're filming, what you'll be wearing in it, why you need to film it today, who, if anyone, is needed to assist you, whether that's, you know, a videographer, whether that's uh, another creator for the content, and then also where that content will take place, etc. So defining your goal specifically highlights other potential decisions or planning that will be necessary to know when you're attempting to complete this task. So I personally believe as creators, our to-do list will usually only say something like create content, but we often procrastinate and blink out when it's actually time to film. But if you had this defined very intentionally and very specifically, this task would be way easier when you're actually approaching it or completing it. So that is what it means to be specific in your SMART goal. What it means to be measurable. So in your measurable SMART goal, the goal will be to have a quantifiable or observable criteria for measuring the progress and success. So this is going to help you determine if you're on track or if you need to make a, you know, any kind of adjustments to your goal or to achieving your goal. If you're like myself, when you're or when I'm creating content, I have a handful of things that accompany that main explicit video. So when I say I'm creating content, that means I'm also shooting a photo set, I'm shooting a sexting set, I'm shooting an OnlyFans story clip, I'm shooting my trailer, and then also my explicit video. So for myself specifically, I can measure the progress of accomplishing this goal because out of those five parts of filming my content, I can measure them as I complete them. So if my photo set is complete, then I'm one fifth the way done with this task or 20% fitted. Once I complete that and my sexting set, then I'm two fifths complete with this task or 40% finished. That is what it means to be measurable and to have measurable goals. Now, to be achievable, this is a really important one. And this is the one I fuck up the most, if I'm being honest. (laughs) To be achievable, the goal must be realistic and attainable taking into account your current resources, abilities, and constraints. This means that, yes, a goal should stretch you enough to be challenging, but also not so much that it becomes impossible. So if I'm speaking candidly, this is the part I have the hardest time with because as humans, we tend to overestimate what we can do in a given period of time or amount of time. That is why the A in your SMART goal is so important. Stopping to ask yourself if you're, you know, what you're setting out to do today goal-wise is realistic or achievable within your circumstance for that day is so important because often we set up these huge unachievable goals, you know, like film seven videos in a day. That's something I actually used to do in my career today. That'd never be possible. If you're setting yourself up for something unachievable, you are setting yourself up for failure before you even get started. And that is that kind of overwhelm that will pile on yourself because you'll feel like a failure. You'll tell yourself you're a failure. And then all of a sudden you're overwhelmed and you do nothing because you've already failed just by setting that unattainable goal to begin with. So I think that this A and the SMART goal is so, 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 so important. So like I mentioned, I used to film five to seven shows in a single day when I was filming content. And that was sustainable for me and my situation then. But it certainly would not be sustainable now three companies later. So the only way that you can take that into account is really to assess whether your goal or your task for the day is actionable and achievable when you're dissecting it using the SMART goal system. So the next letter is to be relevant, the R in SMART. So this goal is also really important. This makes sure that what you're setting out to achieve is aligned with your values, your needs, and your priorities. So It should be meaningful and it should be worthwhile to you as well as contribute to either your personal or professional growth. Content creation as a task, because we're sticking to this example, is obviously relevant to your career and business. We know this because we're content creators. But how often do you actually stop to think about how it's driving the direction of your career forward? So do you want to win awards for a certain content category at, say, Xbiz? Maybe you should be focusing on putting out more of that specific type of content. There was a time in my life where I was, you know, dating my ex-girlfriend who was also in the industry and something we had talked about and that I was really interested in was working towards winning girl, girl or lesbian clip artist categories. And so what we did was that was probably 50% of the content we were putting out during that period. However, as the relationship ended, I launched other businesses and obviously my goals changed. So keeping that in mind as well, that, you know, life will happen, your business will grow and it's okay for your priorities to evolve and change, you have to understand and be really intentional with what your goals are at the time so that you know the steps you're taking are aligned in achieving those goals. So keeping this in mind and being very intentional about what you're setting out to create. You shouldn't just be creating content for the sake of creating content unless that really is the objective. 
is the content you're creating aligned with the bigger vision of where you want your career to end up? Is it aligned with, you know, something that's trending? Is it aligned with content your fans are requesting, things your audience are asking for? All of these are important to consider the relevancy in what you're doing in the goal or the task or what you're doing in creating content for this example. The T in SMART goal, this is an obvious one for me, um, it just means to be time bound. So the goal should have a deadline or a time frame for completion. So this is going to help you stay focused and stay motivated as well as create a sense of urgency and accountability. One of the biggest things creators feel that they lack in terms of structure or in this career path is accountability because we are our own business owners, we are entrepreneurs, and we don't have someone coming in and checking in like, hey, did you film today? Hey, did you post today? Hey, you know, we don't have that. Having this time bound deadline is going to help with that sense of accountability. So again, we're going to use the content creation task as an example. I typically give myself about one to one and a half hours to film the content and then about 30 minutes to an hour to edit it. So that means for me personally, my entire content production time start to finish is time bound by about two and a half hours total. So knowing this really helps me stay focused on the task itself because I'm not going to sit around in lingerie and scroll Instagram when I should be filming. And I know I only have two and a half hours to produce it because that's what my content you know, task on my to-do list is time bound to. The other thing is I'm someone who really advocates for momentum. I know the moment I stop doing things or I take a big break or I go on a vacation, I don't know the last time I have, but <laughs> I, I don't do those things because I really work well with momentum. So my daily schedule is pretty much packed back to back to back. And the reason for that is I know if I miss you know, a time block, I'm screwing up the rest of my day and the rest of my time blocks because I work really well off momentum. So if I know I only have two and a half hours time bound for content and that's my only window to do content today, I have to make that window. Otherwise, I don't get another chance at it. So this is another reason time bound really holds you accountable and gives you that sense of motivation and urgency. So overall, this is why setting these SMART goals for your task is a really powerful tool for achieving the goals. So by keeping that goal specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound, you essentially create a support system around whatever the task is that increases the likelihood of you achieving it. So this is why the SMART goal system is really key when you're setting clear goals and clear priorities in general. Now, the next step is to actually plan and schedule the task or the goal that you're attempting to achieve. So this means developing either an editorial calendar or some kind of calendar that outlines the content creation and the publishing schedule. Again, we're just using content creation as an example, but developing some kind of plan and schedule around all of your tasks is fundamental. So I know I mentioned this before, but I use a task management software program called Asana, which also incorporates a calendar feature on it. That is what I use to plan my content out for the month. Everything I'm going to shoot goes up on this calendar. However, you could use Google Calendar. That's what I used to use before I had this paid tool um, just as easily, and it's completely free. So I would suggest starting that. You can start, you know, a separate email to have a separate, entirely separate Google Calendar if you'd like. But the point is that you'll plan out in advance everything you want to shoot for all of your shooting days in the month. And also, if you are using Google Calendar, on the right side of your Google Calendar, when you're looking at it displayed on your on your monitor or on your laptop, there's a blue check mark with a circle around it on the right side toolbar. It's called Task. And you can basically keep a to-do list right there that you can check off alongside your calendar. So this is really great. I've used this feature. I, I use Google Tasks as a separate app entirely on my phone as well. But that Tasks feature goes really nicely with the calendar feature, especially if you're using Google Calendar to plan or as an editorial content calendar. Allocate time aside from just the developing the editorial calendar. Allocate time for brainstorming, research, writing, editing, and any kind of promotion you have to do. So all of these things you need to plan and schedule in advance. So to continue using, again, content creation example, as we obviously all have that goal in common, during the brainstorming phase, I suggest to use another acronym called TOTALS, TOTALS, T-O-T-A-L-S. It stands for Type, Outfit, Toy, Angle, Location, and Storyline. This is something um, I'm crediting because it's just not my idea, this acronym. This is actually created by Tilly Toy, another creator um, I met via Concentro. She's awesome. Go follow her. But you can use this TOTALS system to kind of guide when you're planning out any kind of content in the brainstorming phase so that when you show up on set or in your camera room or whatever your filming location is, you already know pretty much every aspect of the scene that you're about to film. So it takes out all of the guesswork, which is often the only factor that actually keeps you from not filming to begin with. So now all you got to do is show up and shoot. So 
In regards to planning and scheduling content, I suggest really outlining where you want to implement your content for your fans and then abide by that formula. So there's going to be testing and improving on this formula over time. But for example, I have an outline that I follow when scheduling and publishing to my OnlyFans feed. And this is kind of what it looks like. So I send a good morning mass message at 6 a.m. and I unsend that 24 hours later. I do that for the purpose of just getting a notification on all of my fans and fans I'm following's, you know, inbox. And then I unsend it so that there's not a bunch of spam good morning messages for the people that don't reply. Then I will post a safe for work picture on the feed with a call to action at 10 a.m. Then I will post a not safe for work pic on my feeds with a call to action at 1 p.m. This is for the VIP page, obviously. Um, then I will post a vertical video clip on my OnlyFans story at 3 p.m. Then I'll post a safe for work video trailer at 5 p.m. Then I'll post a not safe for work full explicit video on my feed at 6 p.m. So this is what I mean when I'm suggesting an outline of how you want to implement your content because then you have this outline available to you and you can just rinse and repeat it and publish according to your outline across whatever platform you use based on the formula you've created. And again, you will test this formula. Maybe you're getting you know, more tips on a post if you don't post it at 1 p.m. but you post it at 2 p.m. So you can tweak this and you can you know, hone it as time goes on based on the feedback and the data you're getting from your fans and their spending. But just in general, having some kind of outline or formula to post to will one, streamline your content process because now you know all the things you have to shoot because you know exactly what's getting published and when. But also it's going to give you a guide so that when you sit down to schedule, you're not guessing anything. You know what to post and you know when to post it. Now, knowing that your publishing schedule will obviously ensure you're creating enough content to support the publishing that you want to be doing, but it's going to help you do it quickly and more effectively. So if you're at a point in your career where maybe you have the resources to hire your first personal assistant or your first virtual assistant, a lot of this planning and publishing process, you can, of course, delegate to someone else. But in order to do that, you're going to also need to know how to delegate effectively. Delegating your tasks is really an effective time management tool once your business reaches a certain threshold. I'm often asked by creators, like, at what point should I hire my first assistant or my first virtual assistant? And that's not really a question I can advise anyone on without looking at, you know, their business really thoroughly because I need to know not only your income, but an accurate assessment of your expenses, et cetera, to make that suggestion. But what I can say is that as a general rule, if you are keeping about $5,000 in pure profit after your business is, you know, business's expenses are paid and your living expenses are paid. So you have that 5K full profit free and clear. You could put it in your savings in in theory. That's kind of when I would suggest you hiring your first kind of teammate. So a teammate is, you know, your personal assistant, your virtual assistant, someone who you're familiar with, who you trust to help with your first set of tasks. Um, I will put a disclaimer on that. I had almost exclusively hired friends and family um, when I first started hiring. And that's not been problematic to me in the sense that like, you know, we, we were no longer friends or we don't have great working relationships. That really wasn't the case. It was more so... I was hiring people I wanted to work with versus hiring people who were extremely qualified for the position they were doing. And in retrospect, if I had gone out and looked to hire professionals who are really good at what they do in a specific area, my business would have been better off for it and I would have accelerated things faster. So I will suggest that if you are looking to hire, go looking for someone who's really qualified to do that job. I wouldn't just hire friends. You can do it. It's just going to take you longer to get where you want to go, in my opinion. So now, if you do work with a team or you have an assistant, delegating tasks such as scheduling, editing, graphic design, or social media management, or even engagement, replying to your comments on your behalf, et cetera, those things in administrative tasks, so replying to emails or setting up appointments, those things can be offloaded and delegated to qualified individuals. This is going to allow you, the creator, to focus on your core competencies as a content creator. At the bottom line of things, as a content creator, the one thing you will pretty much never be able to outsource is creating content. So, you know, at least until AI improves quite a bit to a point where we can. So that being said, if you're maybe not in a place to hire and delegate your task, that's totally okay. You can still manage your business on your own by just breaking down those tasks into really small, tangible chunks. Dividing the content creation process into smaller chunks, such as, you know, researching, outline, drafting, um, drafting captions is what I mean when I say drafting, editing and publishing, this approach can help you maintain focus and track your progress more easily. And this will already happen naturally if you're using that SMART goal system 
for setting up and defining your task, as well as the total system for outlining your filming process. Now, I know that when I am saying these things, it probably feels like, man, if I implement this smart goal thing and this totals thing and and I'm doing all this myself, like that's going to be really overwhelming because it, it sounds like it's going to add work to your workload. But actually using both these systems, while it feels and sounds like that, it will probably take you maybe 10 to 15 minutes to think through your your goals this way, you know, to go through the SMART and think about your goal net in that aspect and to think about filming with the total system, T-O-T-A-L-S, and think about what that actually will look like for your content. But that 10 to 15 minutes you use to think and actually plan this stuff out is likely going to save you 30 minutes to an hour where you're not guessing at anything or wandering around when it comes time to actually create the content. Keep in mind, everything I'm telling you, you could just have the acronyms written out on a Google Doc in power, like bang them out really quickly and then get to work. It's not something that's going to take you a day to sit around and plan that it shouldn't, it shouldn't be anyway. If you are, I think that um, you're probably a little bit distracted. This next one is a big one for me. Um, it's all about minimizing distractions. So the other thing that's going to save you a lot of time is minimizing all and any distractions. I'm sure that all of your smartphones, those of you who are tuning in or even your computers these days, have some sort of do not disturb setting on your devices. So this will help silence notification. It's going to keep the outside world from intruding on your productivity. My do not disturb settings are set to a schedule. So when I wake up at 5 a.m., my phone instantly goes into focus mode and then none of my social media app notifications are going to get through. Only the contacts on my favorites list are going to get through. And so I'm not going to be interrupted by someone texting or calling me and just throwing my focus in a different direction. The biggest challenge I personally believe that we face in like a modern society from a productivity standpoint is focusing our attention. You know, TikTok has blown up because we all have attention spans these days. So we have these incredible super computers that are just in our pocket or in our hand for hours each day, demanding that we focus in a thousand different places. But the more of that that you can remove, the better you can increase your attention on what you actually need to be doing to move your business forward. Even when my phone isn't in focus mode and my do not disturb setting isn't on, like on the weekends, I still don't get social media app notifications. I have all of them turned off regardless of the focus mode I'm in, just because I want to set that boundary with the online world and not give them 24-hour access to me. I think it's really important to set boundaries with the internet and the way the internet can intrude into your real life with notifications and emails and things like that, the same way you set boundaries with people in your personal life. Without doing it, I mean, you're going to be pulled in too many directions, like 99.9% of the time. And I believe that's why so many people actually don't make progress towards their goals these days, because you never have any time or energy left to focus on the things that you actually want in life. So really setting those boundaries and setting up do not disturb settings is going to help a lot with that. Consider designating a you know dedicated workspace as well that's going to eliminate distractions like an office or a cam room or a filming area, whatever it may be. I would definitely suggest not doing this on the couch, uh, not doing this where there's a TV and also not doing it where, where you're like outrageously comfortable. Like I'm not going to lay in bed on my, co- uh, on my laptop and schedule content, not for the sake of it's, you know, getting comfortable because I'm going to be there a while, but for the sake of my focus, the more comfortable you are, the less long-term your your body will allow you to focus. It's just something that happens in the brain. When you're in this designated space, you're going to limit unnecessary distractions like, you know, background noise, social media, things like that. I typically put on like lo-fi music or even classical music. I'm kind of big into classical music as well. Establish boundaries with the people in or around your household for uninterrupted work time. So, when I walk into my office in the morning, I have this neon sign um, behind my desk. It says Melrose Michaels on it. You may have seen it if you've ever seen me on stream or whatever. But when that neon sign goes on in the morning, for me, that signals to me like, okay, I'm clocking into work. The sign is on. And then at the end of the day, when I turn off my neon sign, that's me clocking out of work. I'm leaving the office. And that's kind of the signal I set up for myself every day. And the same goes for my office door. So when my office door is closed, the people in my household know to not come in and interrupt me. I could be on a call. I could be filming a little clip for, you know, a dick fading or something, whatever it is, it kind of signals to the rest of the house, like I'm busy, I'm in my office, I'm in work mode. So another fundamental part of just time management in general, we kind of touched on this earlier, is time blocking. So time blocking is a time management technique that improves, or sorry, that involves dividing your day into blocks of time and then assigning specific tasks or activities to each block. So the idea is to schedule your day in advance and then allocate time for the most important task. 
This way you can stay focused, you can minimize distractions, and you can increase your productivity. So to use time blocking, you start by identifying your most important tasks or activities for the day or for the week, and then you create a schedule that allows and allocates specific blocks of time to each activity, taking into account your natural energy levels, your deadlines, and other commitments. So for example, you might want to block off two hours in the morning for like writing, um, and then maybe an hour after lunch for social media engagement, and then another two hours in the afternoon for like research and planning content. Time blocking can be done using, like I mentioned earlier, a calendar or a planner. Obviously at Sexwork CO, we have written planners for those of you who love to write things out, but it needs to be just as detailed while being flexible for your actual life. So the key is to really stick to your schedule as much as possible and then adjust it as needed based on your progress or changing priorities as your business evolves. And then a big piece of this is also paying attention to your natural rhythms as a human. So we're going to get into that a little bit later, but I do want to mention that ahead of this too. Scheduling dedicated blocks of time for specific tasks such as admin work, content planning, filming, editing, social media promotion, engagement, etc. This method can help you stay focused and reduce time spent switching between tasks. A great tool for time blocking again, Google Calendar. I have my date time blocked for the gym, getting into hair and makeup, admin work, content creation, a time block available for meetings. So any meetings I have to schedule, they will get scheduled within that time block per each day. And then a time block for live live streaming on Twitch or OnlyFans, wherever I end up. So every night before I go to bed, I typically will check my Google Calendar. I'll see what I have, you know, scheduled for the next day. And then I'll kind of glance at what tomorrow's time blocks look like and what I have planned. And I want to emphasize that when you first start time blocking, there may be a stretch of time where you're testing things and, you know, figuring out what makes sense to do when. So this is what I'm what I was suggesting earlier when I'm saying paying attention to your natural rhythms. So for example, when I wake up, I'm pretty much my most focus the earliest in the day. So when I'm doing admin work, it's going to be first thing in the morning because that's when it comes natural to me. I'm also most creative at this time. So I write these Twitter spaces like this Twitter space when I was writing it all out and putting my thoughts on paper. That was happening at 6 a.m. this morning because that's when I find I'm most creative and these things flow the easiest for me. So for that reason, I will time block tasks that need focus or creativity first thing in the morning. I will purposely not time block content creation after 4 p.m. because that's when my creativity and energy levels are at their absolute lowest. So knowing these kind of natural rhythms of how your mind and body functions and when and where it hits its peaks throughout the day should absolutely be taken into account when you're time blocking your days. Otherwise, you're basically just adding resistance to your daily work as opposed to reducing resistance. And I want to emphasize that too because when I first started time blocking my day, I would put things on the calendar that made the most sense, you know, logically to me. And I could never stick to my time blocking. And then probably went on for like, I will say like three years like this, like the most ambitious time blocked calendar, never followed it, not one day ever. And then it wasn't until I figured out this, this part of it, the rhythm part of it, where I was like, oh, well, I'm really focused first thing in the morning where I can write essays and I can be creative and I can, you know, tell stories. And I can really get the juices flowing first thing in the morning. But like after 12 p.m., like creativity is out the window and then I'm just kind of in robot mode. Whereas like, okay, I can do a live stream and I can be entertaining, but I can't be creative and I can't be creating content at this time. So really figuring that out is going to reduce resistance in your business and allow for you to, you know, kind of get ahead in that aspect. And that's going to help you in the long run. Now, the next part of this that I want to touch on is called the Pomodoro Technique. If you've never heard of the Pomodoro Technique, it's basically a time management method that was developed by, and I'm going to butcher this name, sorry, you historical figure. I think it's Francesco Cirillo or Cirillo in the late 1980s. This technique's named after a tomato-shaped kitchen timer. I actually used to do this technique with a kitchen timer just because I didn't want my phone near me. Um, but Pomodoro means tomato in Italian. And that is what Cirillo, Cirillo used to work these time intervals. So the Pomodoro technique involves breaking your workday into 25-minute work intervals called Pomodoros, which are basically separated by short breaks, either 5 to 10 minutes. So the basic steps of this technique are as follows. You choose a task that you want to focus on and complete it within one or more Pomodoros or one or more 25-minute intervals. You set a timer Again, I would use an external timer as opposed to your phone timer because it just increases the likelihood of you looking or getting involved with your phone, which is kind of a trap. But setting a timer for 25 minutes to work on a chosen task until the timer goes off. The other benefit of this is that you tend 
to kind of make it in a game or gamify it with yourself when you have a timer at play where you're like, how much can I get done in 25 minutes? Let's find out. And when you start doing that, your productivity increases as a byproduct of using the Pomodoro technique. So when the timer goes off, you take a short break, either five to 10 minutes, basically just to rest your mind and recharge. And this doesn't need to be mindless. You don't need to go into meditation mode unless you want to. But this can be something like just watching a YouTube video that's entertaining, playing a video game, taking a walk, going to make a snack, grabbing another drink. It could be anything. Just you need to stop doing that task for five to 10 minutes. You're going to repeat this process then working on another task or continuing your first task for another 25 minute Pomodoro followed by another short break. And after every four Pomodoros or every hour of chunks working like this, you're going to want to take a longer break, kind of 15 to 30 minutes. That's usually when I'll incorporate, you know, lunch or um, go for a walk personally. For me, after four Pomodoros is when, like I said, I'll usually go for a walk because of the added benefit of just moving your body, you know, getting blood pumping, getting out of a chair, um, things like that that will naturally wake me up and help me kind of come back working more energized and more focused. In terms of working on content creation using this technique, I apply it here as well. So I'll I'll do work when I'm working on content in 25 minute intervals and then still take short breaks in between. And I mean this in the sense that this technique, while it helps you maintain focus and prevent burnout, it can also enhance your productivity by using your breaks just to switch tasks that you're focusing on. So for example, when I'm filming content, I've already mentioned this is kind of a one to one and a half hour process without the editing. But I will edit things in between filming just to break them up and break up that time and focus into the 25 minutes. So say I'm starting to shoot my content. I already mentioned that's a five-step process for me. I have the photo set. I have the sexting set, et cetera, et cetera. So if I'm just shooting that photo set, typically that's going to take me about 25 minutes. So that'll cost me my first Pomodoro. And then I will use my five to 10 minute break to typically start editing some of those photos and get that done and out of the way before I start creating the next piece of content or that's on my checklist, so the sexting set. So the switching of tasks can be extremely useful, especially when you're ex- you know, experiencing creative locks or getting frustrated. I swear <laughs> that this took me 11 years as a content creator to understand how much of a superpower taking breaks is. I truly, truly, truly believe that breakthroughs, that word breakthroughs comes from taking breaks. It's almost always when they happen to me. And if if I could have you just take away one thing from this entire time management space, it would be to use and take breaks really intentionally. I think you will be better for it and your career will accelerate because of it. At least that was what happened in my experience. So now the last part of this is going to be to regularly review and adjust your time management. So monitoring the performance of your content and using analytical tools to evaluate your time management strategies is really important. Adjusting your approach as needed to optimize your productivity and your effectiveness of your content, since we're using this content creator example. What I mean when I'm saying that is that if a certain type of content that you're filming or you're creating, you had to spend five hours creating and producing, maybe it was really intense, maybe you filmed from a zillion different angles or multiple phones or what have you, and maybe your editing is really intense because you're, you know, cutting from this phone angle to that phone angle and adding music and adding effects and all of these things. And say that you put out that piece of content, but it doesn't end up landing phenomenally well with your fans. So if you're in this business to just to make money and to to build a business, not just as an artist, which is totally fine if you are, that's totally fair. That's just not the focus of the space. But if you're in it to build a business, when you do something like that, that tells you that investing that amount of time and effort into that content didn't have a good ROI for you. So maybe not or consider not doing it that same way again. This is something I had to learn really hard because I was so caught up with having beautiful content and I still find myself getting caught up in this way because I I love the cinematography of it even before I was an adult I was involved with you know photography and filmmaking just in my own like passionate hobby kind of way so I get really wrapped up in making things extremely beautiful and and polished and and flawless and that's pretty much the opposite of what most fans want (laughs) like everyone's looking for this amateur thing this thing that feels really real and raw and that's just not what comes naturally to me So when I kind of started to notice like, okay, this content that I spent so much time on and I turned into what I consider this work of art, it's not hitting, like it's not making me money. So as much as I love this and I I know I can create these beautiful things, I need to find a happy medium where I'm satisfied with what I'm putting out, but my fans are happy to consume it because ultimately this is my business. So keeping these kinds of things in mind when you're creating content and producing content and publishing content. 
those data-driven decisions will guide your upcoming month's content calendar during those planning phases. When you just apply these kind of strategic time management principles, you're automatically going to streamline your productivity for success. Without utilizing these kinds of tools, you're essentially agreeing to drive blind in your business. So imagine getting hired for like a corporate company, you know, back in the day, we all kind of went through that phase or most of us have, and then showing up to work and having zero processes in place to follow. You would literally have no idea what you're supposed to be doing in your cubicle. So the same kind of goes for your business, except that you need to set those processes for yourself. You need to give yourself structure so that you have a system in place that drives you towards success or drives you in your business in the right direction. Because without one, you're just guessing and wishing and hoping as opposed to zeroing in on a specific target and attacking it with that sniper-like accuracy. So I hope some of that helps and is like a good takeaway for you. And I hope some of these things you'll implement yourself and your business or in your day-to-day during these planning and brainstorming phases. As we kind of come to an end, the next set of courses that we're going to drop following the Sex Panther ones are going to be a five-part free video series on AI and how to utilize artificial intelligence in your adult content creator business just to automate and monetize some of your business plans. So again, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you do and hit the notification bell while you're there. Lastly, most importantly, I want to emphasize that all of the information we put out here on Sexwork CEO is free because we believe in this idea that the more financially successful creators are, the more resources we will have as a community to do good, important shit like lobby Congress, impact policy, organize, and more. So if you find value in the content that you heard today or the tweets we put out and you've engaged with, et cetera, please, please, please consider sharing them to your socials to make this journey easier for your own adult creator friends. Our only ask is that you retweet and share our stuff with as many people as possible, just so we can reach as many creators as possible. So thank you in advance for that. It would be absolutely incredible if you rated this podcast five stars and left a little review. We want to get this podcast to as many adult creators as possible. And you taking a second to leave a couple stars and a review really helps us do that. Thanks so much. I'm going to wrap up this space here. Basically, next week, that is going to be dedicated entirely to negotiating. Whether you've either had to like negotiate with fans themselves in DMs about content pricing or custom content or something like that, or contracts for, you know, brand ambassadorships with other companies possibly, or even just negotiate the structure of like appearances at expos and events, this Twitter space is going to help you really provide valuable insight on how to negotiate thoughtfully and strategically for your creator business. Um, It's something I've negotiated is like my favorite thing to do. People hate negotiating with me. Uh, not because I'm like difficult, but because I really am intentional with the things I ask for. I really control the terms of a negotiated of a negotiation. Um, whereas most people and most creators often think that controlling the financial outcome is more important, and it's not. It's actually the terms. So, anyways, love y'all, and I'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Who misses free and affordable ads without the anti-sex work rhetoric? Assembly 4 is a team of sex workers and technologists from Melbourne, Australia, aiming to bring back free and fair advertising to the sex work community. They also give back to organizations based in harm reduction, sex work, and education, stepping away from the clunky design of traditional platforms. Their platform, Trist.link, is a refreshing and well-needed change in both presentation and mission. It's free to join and open to all. In the words of an A4 user, From the policies to the language to the advice and tips, it makes such a big difference to feel supported and encouraged instead of policed.